I now want to look at an increasingly important aspect of international marketing, globalization. Globalization is the idea that as international travel and communication expand, the world's becoming more homogenous. Different cultures are converging as people everywhere become increasingly similar in the way they live. There are the fads and fashions people follow, the products they buy, how they relax, the heroes they look up to, and so on. So as we travel around the world, we become accustomed to seeing the familiar. Cyber cafes, CDs of bands we love, Starbucks coffee houses, advertisements for well-known brands. In fact, I bet you can think of plenty of other examples. Think Google, cell phones, MTV, the familiar faces of top fashion models and sporting icons, right? Let's consider then first some of the causes of globalization. Then let's think about its implications for businesses looking to market their products globally. First then, the causes of globalization. Clearly, flight has been a key factor here, perhaps the key factor. And as its popularity has increased, so has its affordability. Today, most people travel by air. For those traveling to holiday destinations, it's the preferred way to go. It allows us to go further, quicker. And for business people, it enables them to do business face-to-face -face on the other side of the world and reduces time away from the office. The resulting interaction between cultures has surely promoted shared values and attitudes. This is an important feature of globalization. Then there's the news and entertainment industry. We can't really talk about global culture without considering the huge influence of the internet, TV, radio, newspapers, magazines, and film. Today, these are multi-million dollar industries, and most films, documentaries, quiz shows, and soap operas are made in the hope that they'll be bought and shown around the world. Many eventually become powerful and lucrative international brands. Popular TV series are watched on every continent and have near universal appeal. Why? Well, because they're based on common human experiences. They evoke feelings and emotions we all share. And this brings me to a key element of the news and entertainment industry and its role in helping create a global society. Advertising. Ads are a common feature of television, magazines, and, of course, internet sites. Don't you just hate those pop-up windows? Advertising works through the media, driving fads and fashions. So this makes the media a potent marketing tool, see? Because it spreads ideas incredibly widely, quickly, and effectively. The third and final cause of globalization I want to highlight is politics. I want you to think specifically about the dissolution of social and economic barriers through political activity and international agreements. Take the European Union, for example. Here, a group of countries with quite different and distinctive cultures and traditions have come together in the spirit of cooperation. Many Europeans now have begun to feel that they're members of a larger pan-European culture. Increasingly, heads of government, and not just in the EU, appear to be consulting and acting in unison on issues affecting the entire world. Issues like the environment, crime, world poverty, etc. Arguably, these things are lessening ideological differences between nations. And because they're reported on news channels like CNN and seen by millions, they help create a sense of pulling in the same direction. They create a feeling that there's a common culture of humanity, if you like. Now, these phenomena have created easier access to global markets, no doubt. But marketing success, as measured by sales figures, is not guaranteed. And this brings me to the second part of my lecture, the implications of globalization for marketing. You know, although different markets may share common human wants and needs, Marketing successfully to those wants and needs is never universal. Marketing professionals must be mindful of the local culture's values and buying behaviors when deciding strategy. This distinction between global and local culture is sometimes referred to in terms of the universal and the particular, respectively. A product becomes a universal icon only because it has particular appeal to many individual cultures across the globe. It's the job of a company's regional manager to ensure that the product has local appeal. Another challenge in marketing messages across cultures is understanding differing communication styles. 
Anthropologists make a distinction between high context and low context cultures. In high context cultures, Asian and Hispanic cultures for instance, communication depends heavily on context. This means the nonverbal aspects of communication. In low context cultures, like the US for example, communication is more explicit and verbal. So an example, in Japan, an ad promoting a luxury car might contain very little dialogue but a lot of impressive scenery, sophisticated gadgetry, and stirring music. These elements rely on the power of association. In contrast, in America, the ad's emphasis might be on a spoken message explaining the technology behind the car, something more explicit. Now, as a lesson in what not to do, let's take a look at two examples of companies goofing up in their efforts to market their products internationally. A company tried introducing its instant coffee to France, a country where the casual image of the product didn't fit into the French practice of preparing real coffee, which is a fixed part of the French morning routine. Then there's Campbell's Soups, which lost $30,000 in advertising in Europe before realizing that British consumers weren't familiar with the concept of condensed soup. This particular case highlights how easily marketing departments can fall into the trap of assuming that just because two countries share a language and cultural heritage, they'll be enticed by the same message. This can be a costly miscalculation.